Hey guys, this will be video 7 for the uh, Vintage uh, Falcon uh, uh, replica build. And uh, I'm going to primarily focus on the neck just for just for an, another minute or two, but very quickly transition into talking about the body because that's definitely long overdue and uh, an, enough with the neck already because there's, there's a lot of different ways you can build a neck and or proceed with that. And I will say that I primarily focused on building the neck three piece just because that's it's it's probably going to be easier to find maple that's three quarters of an inch thick. Now, if you go online and you order some maple that's you know like an inch thick, maybe an inch and an eight thick, then that's cool. Then you can build like a just a two piece neck, or uh, you could build a one piece neck. But to my knowledge, I don't know if I've ever seen a one piece maple neck. And I really wouldn't recommend that. I, that would be spooky. I don't have a problem doing that with uh, mahogany and have done it several times. But I much prefer to uh, do a two-piece neck. Even if, I were, even if this were like a, a large piece and if I ripped it right down the middle and then glued it right back together, at least that would guarantee that I was revealed uh, what, what problems the board might present. So... Uh, and if you were going to go with a two-piece neck, then you would you would be able to buy a board. The width the width of that board would be could could be considerably more narrow. If if you were going to do a hill cap, you could go with probably a board as narrow as about a three and a half inches wide. But I would suggest just going ahead and buying a board that is a minimum of about four inches wide or four and a quarter inches wide. Will give you uh, plenty of uh, material left over to uh, rough out some material from this area or possibly this area right here uh, to uh, for the ears for the little ear glue up and then the little ear glue up right there because uh, that's just the way they've always done it and it's a very efficient way um, to uh, use your material and especially if it's paint grade, because it'll be uh, painted anyway. So, uh, and then how would you go about gluing those multiple pieces together, whether it be one, I mean, two piece, three piece, uh, uh, three piece center with two on either side? Uh, I would strongly recommend tight bind, uh, even though I like epoxy. I wouldn't recommend a, an epoxy for that. Um, I don't think you're going to get any tonal uh, improvement at all. Why? Because, as I had mentioned in some of the past videos, because you're only gluing one surface and you've got the ability to, to clamp and do very consistent clamping all the way down, you know, and uh, pull those two boards together. So go with the tight bond and especially, especially use the tight bond if you're going to be doing a stain grade neck. When I say stain grade, I mean clear coat or a visible neck because uh, epoxy has a tendency of leaving uh, a small glue line that's really hard to conceal. Um, it just, it shows really bad. So anyway, uh, so you uh, always prepare to use tight bond in that respect. All right, let me check the time. Uh, three minutes, 43 seconds. That's kind of a record for me to come out of the gate and, and, and transition into something else. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to stop looking at that neck because if I don't stop looking, I'm going to get it off the table. Because if I don't get it off the table, I'll revert back to talking about it. And I don't want to talk about the neck anymore. Uh, other than <laughs> one thing I will mention, this is pretty important. Uh, I keep showing this Les Paul neck that's on the table. But nonetheless, when we're building the neck for this guitar, uh, I'm showing it drawn as a, a being roughed out as have, going, going to have a dovetail. But if you wanted to do a tenon, then you would just want to build your neck a little bit longer. You would have room on either end. I hate that I took that off now. But you would have room on either end to leave that tenon on there if you want. And it's not a bad idea because you're going to have a, a block up in. You're going to have a block right here. I don't have a block on me, but you're going to have a block up in that corner anyway. And typically that block goes back at least about two, two and a half inches. So you would have room for a tenon to go up in there a little bit if you so choose. 
and uh, I last lost my train of thought there. But uh, basically what I was uh, saying is you would have uh, additional material left over. If you wanted to do a tenon, then you could do a tenon. Or if you want to uh, uh, plane this down and add an overhang so that you can raise this neck up, you can. There's just, uh, just think through that. There's a lot of different ways to treat that, okay? And as I move forward through the video series, uh, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about, the difference between a tenon neck and a neck with, uh, with an overhang. And, and we'll, we'll cover that later. So uh, the question would be five, six minutes. Um, what are we, you, this is where you would want to ask yourself for certain, you ought to know by now, what is it, what it is that you truly want to build? Do you want to build a guitar that just looks like a white falcon? Or has some of the, uh, you know, the appearance of a white falcon, but maybe it feels totally different. Maybe it, maybe it sounds and feels more like a three three five Gibson, but it, you know, it, you know, has the white body and the, the sparkle. Uh, I guess all I'm saying is you got to decide. Decide: Are you truly building a falcon? And, and then, if so, what what is a true falcon? Or what are you willing to do to deviate from that? And a falcon is just this. An authentic 50s uh, Gretsch falcon has what they call a 17-inch wide body. From this distance here to the, from this point here to that point there, they claim is 17 inches. But they also claim that the, that the 6120 is a 16-inch body. And every 6120 I've ever picked up, uh, the old ones, they were 15 and three quarter. So the first question I would have is, are you sure that White Falcon and Country Club is actually 17? Well, I don't know because I've never picked one up. But I wouldn't be willing to bet my coffee cup that it is 16 and three quarter because all of the Benedetto's uh, type guitars that are out there, like in other words, like a full, a full blown jazz guitar, they're 17 inches, an actual 17-inch <clears throat> wide body. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Gretsch White Falcon and the Country Club were a true 17 inches. You can't trust the online information because you'll go in there and they'll say, oh, yeah, the body's 17 inches, and they'll say that it's 3 inches thick, or they may say it's 2 and 3 quarter. Well, in all actuality, I'm almost 100% certain that the body is 2 and 7 eighths inch rim okay that's that's the flat side so what is a white falcon it has a plywood maple back plywood maple sides and it has a spruce top the spruce is solid spruce and it's very very likely if not almost guaranteed that the spruce is going to be quarter sewn if not at a minimum rift sewn and is it hand carved? Well, probably not. It probably starts out machine carved, but I would be build, willing to uh, make an, a very strong assumption that the thickness of the body is, is about three eighths of an inch thick. That's very thick, but your big jazz guitars, that's about, they're, they're fairly thick in the middle and they get thinner closer to the side. So I would be, I would be really surprised if the spruce top in the Falcon or the Country Club were were different from that. But um, neither here nor there. It's kind of irrelevant. But well, it's actually not real uh, irrelevant. It's actually critically important because all I can say is from my perspective here, I've got to proceed forward and build this thing exactly the way. I would be building a Benedetto spec jazz guitar with just that. A spruce top that is quarter sewn, three eighths inch thick in the middle. It 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 tapers off to about eighth of an inch thick out at the out at the sides. And then is it is it tuned? Uh, it it can be tuned, but you really tune a jazz guitar from the back. So that's a different story for a, a different song. So uh, what we're going to do here is primarily just build the guitar from a visual standpoint. But it will be hand carved because this guitar that I'm going to build, rather than setting up a press in order to build a, a plywood uh, maple back, it's going to be easier for me to just glue some maple together 
that starts out about three quarters of an inch thick, maybe seven eighths of an inch thick, and then just hand carve it. Uh, I say three quarter. No, it definitely needs to start out at a minimum of seven eighths of an inch thick, if not a little bit more. And then I'll hand carve it to the profile to where it is a certain thickness at the back and then it, get, it does get thinner at the sides, but I'm not gonna go into those details just yet. And then the sides, rather than doing plywood sides, it'll be easier for me to just have some nice maple that I run through uh, the uh, bandsaw and thin out and then run through my thickness sander and get it down to about 3 seconds of an inch and build it just like a jazz guitar where the sides are actually uh, steam bent and they'll just be bent around a bending iron. Uh, again, it, it wouldn't be that di difficult to build the sides out of plywood uh, and, you know, just do a plywood buildup. But by the time you mix your epoxy and by the time you rip your wood and by the time you do this, by the time you get all your clamps in there and you're trying to hold everything consistent, it's just as easy to just bend that wood. It's really not that difficult. And maple bends really well. So it'll be built like a jazz guitar. And if anything, it's probably going to sound better than an authentic uh, a white falcon wood because it'll be um, um, solid wood back maple, and solid wood maple sides, and then it'll have the spruce top. Okay, so but where I'm going with this, the reason I wanted to do this video is, are you sure you want to build a true white falcon? Because let's talk about girth and this, let's talk about Let's talk about a huge guitar, because if there is any such thing as a big guitar, the White Falcon is, a, is so much bigger, probably, than it really even needs to be. But I, And that's one of the reasons that even Billy Duffy had made the statement when they did his signature guitar. He was like, I don't have a problem with you doing a signature guitar, but I don't want that. I don't want that big, wide body anymore. And, and to my knowledge, Billy Duffy's signature uh, White Falcon is a is a sixty one twenty body, but I don't have uh, I, I don't I can't guarantee that. Uh, let me uh, find my other ruler. I may have to pause the camera. Okay, sorry about that. I had to pause the camera uh, and find this ruler because this ruler starts at zero. Uh, this is two and seven eighths of an inch from the tabletop to the top of that piece of plywood. Now that would represent the, the, <clears throat> the rim, obviously, of the guitar. And then uh, in addition to the rim, you've got that uh, roughly seven eighths inch thick back that you would add to that. And then roughly at the top, the top of the guitar ends up being about one inch, okay? So roughly three inches here, a fourth inch, a fifth inch, plus the uh, strings, uh, you know, you end up having a five, six inch thick guitar after it's all said and done. And a traditional acoustic guitar, even though it has a four inch body, it doesn't have any major arch work going on and the bridge is very low profile. So the actual white falcon, falcon in the country club is very likely to feel even thicker than a traditional acoustic. So just factor that in if you've never held one of these and you're thinking about building something like this, it can end up being a fairly big guitar, especially once what we're looking at right here, that's only 15 and, and three quarters of an inch width. Uh, add another half inch. If, if it's 16 and three quarter, if it's only 16 and three quarter, add another half inch all the way around and, and it'll really, astronomically jump in size add add take it all the way up to 17 inches just look at the pictures of people playing it and i've seen pictures of guys that are not not small men they're pretty pretty normal sized guys and they're holding a big they got a lot of big lot of guitar on them <laughs> so uh if you're like me i'm not a big guy and i think if anything i would probably look kind of comical on stage with a <laughs> with a white falcon strapped on so there's a possibility that I'm going to consider, uh, if, if I'm truly making this guitar for myself, uh, I might tone it down a little bit, and, and, I'll, and I, I'm not there yet. But if I were to don't tone it down, well, what would that be right there? That's two and seven sixteenths of an inch. 
that's an eighth inch thinner rim than my 6120. So it might be a little bit of an improvement, even if I go ahead and elect to go with the, the bigger the bigger footprint. Okay. So where I'm going with this, as I get thinner, I don't have a problem going with the big footprint. So let's let's really go to the extremes here. Um, if I were to, and I don't know what the thickness of a 335 is. I just don't. I wish I did, but and I and I, and I, I can, it's not like I can't find out. But that right there is is roughly two and one sixteenths of an inch, and that's looking right. That's based to me. That's already past the threshold. If that's a little bit too thin, it probably needs to be at a minimum probably about right there. And I bet that number is probably about two and a quarter, two and three eighths. And I would imagine a two and three eighths inch thick uh, rim on a 17 inch body or 16 and three quarter inch body, it's probably a three, three, five. So in other words, do we want our white Falcon to sound like a, a three, three, five? And that's what I meant by what are you building? You gotta make that decision. Uh, and, and, I, and I don't really have that answer. Uh, I, I don't even have that answer for myself, unfortunately. And uh, it is what it is. But let me check the time. Because also the main reason I wanted to do this video is obviously to kind of bring a little bit of closure to the, gen the very general conversation. And I can assure you, we're, I'm going to build a guitar. We're going to build a guitar here. But I've got to order... I got to sit down and think about these things right here and really make a decision because I've got to order some material and I got to order some maple and some maple and some, uh, I don't really need the spruce because I've got some really nice, beautiful old Douglas fir that has a tap tone. That's just, just as stellar as the finest European spruce I've ever heard. So nonetheless, I've got to make a decision. And I've got to buy some material and it's going to take about a week to find that stuff, get it ordered, get it in, maybe a week, week and a half. So I say that to say this.